In this video, I am going to show you how the bubble sort works. I'll be demonstrating the concept of the bubble sort and then I will actually write the code to show you how it works. There are different sort techniques like the quick sort, the insertion sort, the merge sort and so on. But the bubble sort is considered to be one of the very basic sort algorithms and those of you at A level or college level programming or software engineering at university level will definitely be needing this algorithm. There are different variations of the bubble sort. I'm going to show you one of these variants. Let's start with this array a five element array named T with data already in it. We will also be using an additional variable called temp. Now in this version what we do is basically compare, start by comparing the first two elements. I'd like to record the elements that we are dealing with because that will be helpful when we come to writing the algorithm. So in this instance we're comparing element, elements 1 and 2. Keep in mind that we're trying to sort the values in ascending order. So when you compare elements 1 and 2, we see that 23 and 15 need to swap places. So if I bring 15 from its current location and at position 2 and put it into the position here I'm going to actually replace that value and therefore that's not the right thing to do that's why we need 10 we start by putting the 23 inside the temporary location out of the array then we move the 15 here and finally bring the 23 down here. Once we're done with elements 1 and 2, we continue comparing element 1 and 3. We see that at this point, the values are fine, that's 15 and 27 are fine, and therefore, we don't need to do anything. So just let's, let's just make a record that we compare element 1 and 3. And so the next one is going to be element 1 and 4. So now, comparing element 1 and 4, we find that 15 and 13 need to switch places. So once again, we bring the 15 to our temporary location, bring the 13 down here, and get the 15 into this one. And finally, to complete this cycle, we, comp we compare the values in element 1 with element 5. And once again, it seems fine, so we're not going to have to do any swaps, so we're done with 1 and 5. So by this time, we have compared the first and the last elements, and by now, the first element must have the smallest value. And if that has been done, so 13 is the smallest value, and once this has been achieved, we can now ignore the, th the, the first element and, and repeat this comparison with the rest of the array. So let me make a fresh copy of this so that we have a fairly clean screen. Let's get that over there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the comparisons, but this time we're going to start by comparing elements 2 and 3. That's in this case is 23 and 15. And we know there is nothing to do there because everything is fine. Then we take elements 2 and 4. Yes, we need to make a swap. Once again, let's just keep track of this. That's element 2 against 3, then elements against 4. So doing the swap now, we bring the 23 there 
and the 15 here and bring the 23 back and then we continue comparing with element 2 against element 5 and that's fine once again there is nothing to do so comparing element 2 and 5 is fine by this time since we reached 5 again by this time the second element must be in its correct place so 13 and 15 are fine now we can ignore elements 1 and 2 so we compare element 3 against element 4 yes 20, 27 and 23 are not in their correct places bring 27 to 10 and 23 over here now bring the 27 down there and it's fine and finally to complete that loop we compare 23 with 20 and yes once again a swap needs to be done so we go repeat that cycle by now we're familiar with this process that was comparing 3 against 4 and then 3 against 5 so by this time the third element is also fine in its correct place and now we have to move forward as if we have been as we've been doing we move forward let's take another copy this is going to be the last cycle here so we start the cycle with element 4 this time compare 4 and 5 and a swap needs to be done let's do the swap bring 23 down there and 27 back so that was comparing element 4 against 5 and if you notice we started off with the first two elements and we closed off with the last two and by this time the entire array should be in order now let's see how to code this you have a choice of many languages that you could use first I would like to demonstrate this using pseudocode so let's say starting off with the very first step that we took we compared the first two elements we know the array is called T so let's say it's a comparison between T1 and T2 that's what we're doing there at that point so I write a very simple if command if an array T1 is bigger than array T2 then we do the swap and the swap basically involved using the temporary location we took the value from we took the value from t1 into temp then we took into t1 from t2 and finally we bring to t2 from temp that was if element 1 was greater than element 2 let me just put an end if there uh, okay now after we compared element 1 against element 2 we went on to 1 3 1 4 and 1 5 so there is a loop there that's continuing that comparison and here's how we do it I'd like to take a variable let's call it B if B were 2 this would be 2 that would be B right so then B should be 3 and 4 then 5 so I simply make this into a very common for loop for b equals 2 to 5 2 and let's close the loop here 
n4. And once you've completed this cycle, we've got to go on to the next cycle. So instead of starting with element 1 and 2, we go to element 2 and 3. For this purpose, I'd like to use another loop, A, starting at 1, and that's going to represent this side. So it starts off at 1, then goes on to 2. So if that were a loop for A equals 1 to something, but let's just keep that something for a moment. We're not going to talk about that right now. So it starts off at 1, and then we want to say, close the loop there. We want to say, make this T1, sorry, make that A. So all the T1s become A. Now, let's check this out. When, when A is 1 and B is 2, we're comparing 1 and 2. When the inner loop, that is the inner loop, runs from here to here, the highlighted portion, the highlighted section is the inner loop. When the inner loop runs, when A is 1, the inner loop runs from 2, 3, 4, up to 5. And we achieve this cycle there. Okay. But the next time when A becomes 2, we have a problem because B should be 3, then 4 and 5. So in our case, B always starts at 2. In other words, we are saying that B has got to be 1 more than A all the time when it starts. That is, when A is 1, B is 2. When A starts at 2, B is 3. And when A starts at 3, B starts at 4. So all you have to do is instead of putting 2 there, we say B is A plus 1 to 5. Now, if A starts at 1 and goes up to 5, that will be a problem because B would start at A plus 1, which is 6, and there is no 6th element here. So for that reason, we make A go from 1 to 4. Now, let's convert this into a real program. And let's bring up our editor. The editor I'm using is Sublime Text. It's a great editor. So we call it the file name sort.pass. And that's because I'm going to be using Pascal for this example. So we start program sorter, begin, and end. We need our variables, the array t, array with 1, 2, 5 of integer. We have three other variables, a, b, and temp. They're also going to be integers in this case. Let's hard code the data so that the user wouldn't need to input the values in. Let's just have some random numbers, 15, 27, oops, that's 15, 27, 20, and 13, okay. Now, our algorithm that we had to make sure that we use the same algorithm let me just put it there for a equals one two four do the inner loop goes for b equals a plus one two five The swap comes here if t element a is greater than t element b 
then begin end. I uh, will say do the swap now. That's ten equals array T element A. Then T A equals T B and T B equals ten. That's fine. And sorry. Yeah. So once that's done, so that's the sort. The, the data gets sorted. Finally, what we need to do is simply output the contents of the array. So let's simply use any variable. Let's say for a equals. I'm reusing the same variable. One to five to right ln array t element a. That's that. Okay. Let's now compile this program and see if we have any surprises or if our code is actually running. So we go call the compiler, free Pascal compiler, sort of pass, and it says linking. So if you saw linking, that means um, the compilation was fine, there was no error. Now to test our code and see if it actually does what it's supposed to do, let's run it. Sorter, no, it's called sort. It's called sort. 13, 15, 20, 23, and 27. That's it. It's done. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section.